rappers and music producers. It's Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com, and I gotta say, if you have a fear of investing into your music career, whether it be your money or your time, hopefully today's video helps you out tremendously. Let's talk about it. Rappers and music producers, I very often times refer to you as small businesses, as entrepreneurs, as rappers, producers, and they are more than just corny names that Curtis King came up with. This is the way that I really view the segment of you or the niche audience of you guys that watch my videos and you watch with the intentions of having a successful and thriving business. However, sometimes when I get to more, I guess, intermediate teaching or I get to more of the stuff that's cutting edge, I have to take into consideration there's all levels of understanding I have to take into consideration that even beyond understanding there's all levels of comfortability that rappers and producers might experience now what do I mean by that what I mean is that some of you guys are at different levels where you're just not comfortable doing the things that I suggest to you when I made the video about leaving SoundCloud there was the audience that said this is interesting and I kind of want to do some more research but I trust what your word is and then there were some people that were like I ain't leaving SoundCloud because that's the community and shut up you're stupid and those are the people who probably dislike these videos I don't care I'm not here for them I'm here for you who is always thinking about pushing your music pushing your brand to the next level and everybody is not built to go to the next level and I must understand that and remind myself on a constant basis that some of you guys may watch my videos you may watch hours of my videos and for some reason or another whether it be fear whether it be just you have hesitation in life for some reason whether it be the way that you were brought up I I don't know but you have this strong force that is fighting against even your own growth and your own opportunity to win when i keep you into consideration i try to think of myself in my perspective in my situation when i first started to get into the business that spawned the empire that i am still building today and that is beat leasing when i first got into it it's funny i made an article on dj booth uh, a few days ago that really talked about the fear that we have as rappers or music producers to put our hard-earned money back into our musical craft I'm not talking about studio time and the things that are a necessity for us to have any kind of physical representation of our dreams I'm talking about investing money that really scares the living shit out of us investing money that you may never get back investing money that you may look back and say that was a bonehead move why'd I do that people are gonna look at me stupid I'm actually am stupid for that kind of money is the one I'm talking about the one that I actually hurt your pockets if you lose it and I know there's many of you and it's not just rappers and producers many human beings who just don't feel like either they're made to have their finances be abundant they don't feel like they, they deserve to have a lot of money they don't think they even deserve to have success their subconscious begins working on them I was listening to Les Brown today in the gym and one thing he said is that most people in life are quietly tiptoeing to an early grade I stopped on the treadmill and I thought about that and I thought about how many folks are actually in the audience that watch my videos that are quietly tiptoeing to an early grave now what does that mean that means that you're doing the bare minimum you're investing the bare minimum to you a premium soundcloud is you saying yeah like i'm, I'm invested in my career like you know what i'm saying like i you know I, I bought some headphones yeah it was it was used and i'm not getting on anybody who can't afford to buy more expensive headphones but i'm saying the folks that do the bare minimum you know who i'm talking about and it may be you that i'm talking about i've noticed a segment of this audience that is not like that but for those of you that are scared shitless when it comes to investing investing into yourself let me share a story with you that'll hopefully help you in that DJ booth article that I made the article headline was how a $500 investment turned into a six-figure business that $500 investment wasn't even my own let me tell you how fearful I was about losing money the way that I was brought up my grandmother would tell me on one end she would say money don't grow on trees bro <laughs> she didn't say bro she said boy it don't grow on trees so you better save all your money so I listened to her my mom would tell me scriptures from the Bible that would even kind of make me look at money as an evil thing my pops on the other hand was an entrepreneur in his own right and I saw the stress that making money even making money brought to his life and even when there had down times in his business I saw that from different perspectives needless to say I had a very complicated relationship with money and the way that I used that money I was not taught to be a risky person when it came to money so when I got in a situation where my back was against the wall life 
was just not presenting me enough alley-oops at the time, or at least I felt like it. I wasn't really grateful. A lot of the things that I already had, all I could think about was the things that I didn't have, which I know there's a lot of you that are out there that feel that same way. And because I was focused on that, all I could see around me was, oh my God, something has to change. I made a phone call to a buddy of mine that was doing really well in this particular business. And I went on a limb and I asked him, you know, would he be open to me taking him out to lunch and maybe just learning a few things about it or just point me in the right direction, point me to some literature, point me to some videos that could help me become better at this. And he did me one better. Came over to my crib, he broke the business down in one night and told me that he thought I could be massively successful at it. He believed in that statement so much, he invested $500 into my business. At the time, there had been nobody, maybe outside of my parents, that invested that kind of money into just me as a human being. Now, to invest that into one of my ideas that Curtis King Beats could be something, nobody had ever invested that amount of money into me. So it left me a little bit hesitant, a little bit scared because the question came in my head, what if I don't make this money back? How will I pay this person back? At the time I wasn't working. On top of that, I had just came off a tour and this is why this applies to rappers and producers. I understand what it is to be a rapper and how expensive it is to be a rapper, at least a rapper that generates income. I came off a tour, I was about $2,000 in debt. I was job hunting and the place that I was living at, I had to be out in the next three weeks. And so I had to figure out a way to generate income, not just to help me move out of that situation, but to hopefully help me pay rent in the next place I was going. As the time started to dwindle down, I was looking into sort of like these hotels where you pay by the week. And, you know, I could at least afford to do that because, you know, I was selling beats via my email, but it wasn't a whole lot of money. But I was looking into that kind of stuff. And so this friend of mine came over he introduced me to the game. You guys know him as awesome. He introduced me to the game. He put that money down. He told me stay step by step how to use this money so that I could somehow get my income back or somehow get a profit even if I'm lucky, or at least I thought if I was lucky. He told me step by step. Then came D-Day. I had to invest that money into a website that I used to use called Beat Brokers. I haven't used that in quite some time, but that was my introduction to beat leasing. I invested all 500 of it, like he told me, into these tokens that were gonna promise that I would be on the front page of the website. I did all of that. I invested into the beat. I went to the checkout on PayPal. I hit the PayPal now, my jaw dropped to the ground as I went back to my beat broker's page. Why did it drop to the ground? Because I invested in the wrong damn beat. You gotta think that my heart was in my throat. I could like chew on the ventricles. My heart was in my throat. I, I was beside myself. I didn't know what to tell him. I didn't know what to say. My gut just felt like somebody had punched it and just took all the love out of my heart or whatever. It was just gone. I called him and I was like very apologetic. I was like, oh man, oh my God, I can't. I'm sorry, bro. Like, I damn near about to cry. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I, I lost your body on the wrong beat. I made, I messed up, man. I dropped the ball. And he just started laughing. He was like, man, it's it's all good. Like, it's just money. I, I looked at my phone like, what you mean it's just money? And what my grandma say, it ain't just money. But he was right. It's just money. Just green pieces of paper. Something very important that I had to do to adapt that mindset because it took me time to understand what he actually meant was read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I, I highly suggest that. For every rapper and every producer that watches these videos, if you don't read any book suggestions that I suggest to you, especially when I talk about The Go-Giver, this is one book you definitely want to invest invest in, especially if you're one of those people that don't want to just do this for fun. I know there's some of y'all out here who just watch my videos. I don't know why you watch my videos if you want to do this for fun. Maybe you just like me. That's cool. We could be friends and all that. But these videos are for people who want to generate income and make a living at what they do. That being said, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if you don't know what it is, was a breakdown of Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the book, his upbringing from two different perspectives. He had his biological dad, who was a guy that was kind of struggling, working check to check doing, you know, really uh, a blue collar type of work. And then he had his rich dad, which was actually his friend's dad, who was rich. His life moved at a different pace. He was abundant financially. He was at ease with his decision making. And his whole ideology was completely different about money. Now think about the people in your life who represent both of those type of dads. You may have somebody in your own household. I'm guaranteeing if you have a struggle with money or struggle with the relationship of money, I guarantee you somebody in your house right now contributed to that mindset. But 
but it's up to you to change the pattern. Reading that book helped me change the pattern. Why? Because in the midst of me reading about the difference between liabilities and assets and how you should sort of save your money off to the side to reinvest it into things that are going to generate income for you and really rival your income to the point where you have financial freedom one day, to have it that definition, I had a vision that money is literally green pieces of paper. You heard me say it in the perspiration before, but I feel like never have I been able so greatly to put it this clear. Never has my clarity been this clear in terms of this subject. It's green pieces of paper. Yes, people kill for that paper. Yes, people rob for that paper. People will strip for that paper. <laughs> people will do some crazy freaky things for that paper, but it's still a green piece of paper. And the power that is in it, we give it. We give it that power. But many times we give away our power because we're giving that piece of paper that much power over our lives, over our decision making. So many times in the industry, when I was in the industry as a producer and a rapper, I let money pretty much carry me by the leash, pull me by the leash everywhere I went, studio sessions. In hoods, I probably should have never been in. I let it pull me in different directions because there was a promise that once I got to the destination, money was on the other end. And I'll tell you, once I read that book, once I finally got to The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann, my whole perspective changed about money. And then what happened after that was so remarkable because, because after the mental shift happened, I, I have this belief that you start attracting different type of people in different type of circumstances, different type of, uh, uh, you know, benefits and different type of conversations because you're moving at a different pace. Financially, life became so abundant. Financially, money was not that hard to come by, but I was scared. And the moment I started overcoming that fear, I started making decision making that attracted other people. It started to attract people who also are risk takers, people who are not afraid. Maybe they have a bit of fear, but they don't let that fear disable them and stop them from investing. To drive the point of this video home today, what I hope that you can capture from this is don't be embarrassed by the fact that you're afraid. We all can get in a situation where we're afraid to invest our money. But you got to know this. If you're investing your money into your idea, if you're investing your money, especially into your growth, you know, it's crazy. Before I bought a legal version of Image Line FL Studio, before that whole debacle, I literally went out and I bought my courses from Busy Works Beats, the homie game from Busy Works Beats. I bought Music Theory in a day. I bought Chord Magic. Why? Because I didn't know how to play the keys. I didn't know music theory. So I got these things. I learned mix your beats easily, you know, and then I got that and learned what he broke down within that. But that could have been anybody that I invested my money with. I just so happened to come across his videos and like the information. So you got to see what things are out there. And here's the most important point. And I please, I hope that you're listening. I know this video is getting a bit long, but I hope that you're listening. Stop looking at the price first. Make sure that you're focused on the value that this product or service has to offer your life, your growth, and your financial abundance. You have to really analyze that first before you think about the price. You know, so many people who have signed up for the producer mentorship program with Epic and I, I told them it wasn't going to be cheap, <laughs> but then they get to it and they start to feel like, oh, I, I know. I, can you guarantee anything? No, I'm sorry. I, I can't guarantee you anything except for one day you will wake up and you will die that day. That's all that I can guarantee you. I don't know if it's going to happen in a day or not. I can't even guarantee you that. All I can guarantee you is that we're all going to die one day. Hate to sound so morbid, but my point is this. Why you are here and you have the opportunity that people in the grave don't have right now. Use the most with your time. Go for it. Take a chance. If you lose money while taking a chance on something that can help you grow or even give you the ability to generate more income, you never lost anything. That's you taking a bet on yourself, not on somebody else's product and not on them. That's a bet on yourself. Keep that in mind. Once again, this is Curtis King and CurtisKingBeast.com. Peace. Please subscribe to the channel below. Curtis King and CurtisKingBeast.com.